Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. We'll just give it a few minutes while people are filing in. Um, and then if you want, please introduce yourself in the in the chat. Uh, say where you're from, uh, how, what you're interested in, and uh, we will do the same. Okay, cool. People are coming in. So we have um, here Bren Palar Puna from Conservation International Philippines. Uh, we have Arturo Tovar from Landscale. And yeah, there's Jason. And Monica, um, well, environmental journalist, uh, happy to have you here. So yeah, here we have uh, Omega Kaya from Tanzania and Lawrence from the South Pole. And here we have Emmanuel from Rainforest Alliance. Okay, so I think we will start. So hello again, everyone. I'm Anissa from Restore. I hope that everyone is in good health. Um, welcome to Restore ISCF Transformation and UN Decade for Ecosystem Restoration webinar. We are very excited to have you here today. And together with me, we also have Ruth and Hima, who are also from Restore, uh, Rowena from ISCF, and Jason from Terraformation. Yeah. So I think, uh, Rowena, you can start your opening remarks. Thank you, Anissa. Hello, all. Welcome to this webinar about the Restore platform. 
it is uh, very useful for promoting and monitoring your restoration project. This webinar is brought to you by Restore Terraformation and the International Society of Tropical Foresters, or ISTF, to help the UN Decade for Ecosystem Restoration. I am Rowena Soriaga. I am the ISTF Asia Pacific representative. ISTF is a collaborative network for sharing knowledge and best practices for sustainably and equitably managing and conserving the world's tropical forests. We are currently around 2,300 members from 110 countries, with some countries having local chapters. Um, next, please. Uh, this is um, the places where ISTF members globally are located. Next slide, please. And this is a word cloud of the professional backgrounds of our members from Asia Pacific, many from research and academe. Uh, for those of you who are not yet members, you may join for free. I will paste on the chat a link for how to join. I hope this webinar can help bring more restoration projects on the Restorm platform to enable connections with collaborators, with funding sources, and important geospatial restoration indicators. Again, as um, Anissa said, please introduce yourselves by typing your name, country, and affiliation in the chat box for those who have not yet done so. And now may I invite Jason Preble to join, welcome you on behalf of Terraformation. Jason, the floor is yours. Thank you, Rowena. Hello, everyone. My name is Jason. Um, I'm Terraformation's Asia Pacific Partnerships Lead. I'm based actually in Hawaii, so I'm in the very middle of the Pacific. Um, next slide, please. So Terraformation is a company we're trying to help scale native forest restoration around the world for carbon, biodiversity, as well as for community benefits. And we have a bunch, we're very happy to have a bunch of partners, including those listed here and Restore and ISTF. Um, we have one partner in India and we're looking for many more on the ground partners in the Asia Pacific. Um, so if you're interested, uh, I'll introduce on the next slide, our uh, Seed to Carbon Forest Accelerator Program. Uh, next slide, please. So this, this program is a program to try to connect restoration groups to carbon financing, because oftentimes, you know, one of the limiting factors to scaling up is that there isn't enough funds to do this good work. Um, so this program is geared towards helping folks that maybe have some experience already with restoration, but not with carbon and need some help getting there. So it has several different phases. I'll drop the link here in the chat for you all to check out. Um, and uh, if you want more information, check out our website, uh, feel free to email me. I'll add my uh, email in the in the link in the chat as well. And uh, anytime, ask me any questions by email. Thank you. I will pass it. I think that's the last slide, and I'll pass it back to Anisa. Yes. Uh, thank you, Rowena and Jason. So hello again, everyone. I'm Anisa, and I'm here with uh, Hima and Ruth from Restore. So. We are a part of the community engagement team at Restore and our team is actively outreaching and engaging the restoration communities around the globe. And we have basically help users to get the best out of Restore platform uh, so that we can support restoration and conservation works. We are also actively collecting feedbacks as it is important for us that the platform improvements reflect what is needed by the restoration communities and also make their job easier. We are very happy to have you all here today. Please count on us if you need any help on the Restore, uh, on Restore platform, be today or in the future. And please let us know if you have any questions, feedbacks and suggestions as Restore is built for the restoration and conservation communities. So this is the agenda for today's webinar. First, we will talk a little bit about Restore background. What is Restore? How can Restore help uh, your restoration and conservation works? and also our current statistics. And then we will watch a video from Brian from Terraformation explaining how Terraformation uses Restore. And after that, Hima will show you around the platform. 
and Ruth will guide you through on how to join Restore, where you can also follow the steps at the same time. Um, you are free uh, to ask questions about Restore, ISDF, and Terra Formation during the whole presentation. You can use the Zoom Q&A panel or the chat box, and our team will answer all of the questions there. And during the Q&A session, we will pick some important questions and also let you speak if needed. Then uh, we will close the webinar, of course. Yes. So just a little bit background on Restore, 99% of nature projects is not visible to the public. We hardly see or hear them simply be just because we don't know where to find them. One of the main mission of Restore is to help elevate the restoration projects around the world that aren't being seen or heard right now, as they hold the knowledge, understand local reality, and they are also players and know the local species, and they are the main key to fighting the current biodiversity and climate crisis uh, we are living in. Most restoration and conservation organizations, uh, we know that they are often too local or small scale and struggle to access funding. So we hope by existing, uh, the existing of Restore, they can be visible, uh, also count on the wider restoration communities for help and exchange knowledge and gain easier access to funding. So this is basically to, to help support and accelerate uh, better restoration. Yes, uh, so we dub Restore as Google Maps for nature-based uh, for nature restoration, because instead of showing you restaurants, tourist spots, and hotels, Restore shows you where nature's needed restoration and where restoration is taking place. And Restore platform is made for restoration, conservation, and also sustainable use of, use of uh, initiative at any scale and uh, any ecosystem worldwide. We operate on two main pillars, first is transparency and second connectivity. So Restore is a space where organization can show who they are, what they do, and where uh, they are on the map. So their work can be publicly tracked using high resolution imagery. So we have uh, two two, uh, high uh, one high resolution imagery, the other one is mid resolution one, uh, high resolution is for Maxar, and mid resolution is Planet McPhee for tropical areas. and also some other monitoring data layers that we will show you later. Uh, and for connectivity, we want to help make initiatives more uh, feasible so they can connect and exchange knowledge to take the restoration movement forward. We also want uh, to connect them to funders and this connectivity is provided by two source of data. So first data provided by users when they add organization profile and sites and second data provided by restore. So to understand more of the later, let's uh, go back to Restore Origins. So, oops, sorry. So how um, Restore actually started. So Restore was actually born out of the Crowder Lab at ETH Zurich. And the Crowder Lab studies global ecosystem, generating knowledge to protect biodiversity and address climate change. They are an interdisciplinary team of scientists studying ecosystem at a global scale to understand the relationship between biodiversity and climate change. However, they had this perception that science information tended to remain in the academic environment and not to get to people working on the field. And Restore was created to make this knowledge more tangible. It became an organization independent of the Crowther Lab when we are a foundation and uh, we operate as nonprofit and we have been philanthropically funded and we also an official partner of the UNDK for ecosystem restoration. Restore makes scientific info more tangible by building layers of data taken from global models from peer-to-peer -peer review articles or official satellite database. When you add a polygon to Restore, it crops each data layer using your polygon as a mold and give you prediction for that specific site. Please note that this uh, global model has always has its constraints. So every model has an amount of error and for global ones, while you have the advantage of having data available for any part of the globe, the resolution of the data can sometimes be low compared to what you actually needed. So please use uh, this data with care. However, Restore provided the best global information available in the science and we have science advisory board to assure this that 
every publication that is picked to be published on Restore is a control. And we have goals to use local data for you from users to improve our models and make them more adequate to local realities. So how Restore can support your restoration and conservation work. So we have broken this into four chapters. First, uh, by providing visibility. So you have a space to show your work. So you can also see uh, yourself and then people can see you and learn more about your organization and also the work you do. And also funders, uh, funders for nature, they can also see uh, where you are, what you are doing uh, according to uh, what you are uploading into Restore and make public. And second is by uh, encouraging collaboration. So within Restore, you can collaborate within your organization, within your own organization or with other organization. There is one specific tab specially for this. And within your organization, you can set up a profile and invite your colleagues to manage your initiative with you. And with broader networks, for example, as both of you and them are visible on the map, you can find each other and exchange knowledge. So there's always uh, normally like always contact details on each project or each organization and profile. Uh, so that if you want to exchange knowledge, if you want to learn more about um, other restoration or conservation projects, you can contact them uh, using emails that they put on their sites or organizational profile. So um, the third one is uh, planning. So our scientific data and high resolution imagery can help you understand the history of your site and support you making decisions about the intervention to take. Besides, with connectivity uh, restore provides, you can also increase your network and access uh, partners, uh, experts that can be, bring information and help you make decisions. And the last one is by monitoring. So besides planning, our data layers and high resolution imagery can also help you track your progress over time. So for example, if you uh, upload your sites now, you will be able to see how your land look like um, until around like 11, 12 years uh, before, and you will be able to see uh, the changes also in the future. Yes, so as of today, Restore is currently the world's largest nature database. There are currently more than uh, 130,000 sites on Restore. It is aided, uh, they are aided by more than 10,000 users, which are distributed in 140 countries and also uh, 14 biomes. Um, and right now the total uh, hectares of, you know, all of this uh, site that is uploaded, it, it covers 66 million hectares. And those users who upload their sites on Restore are affiliated with more than 1,000 organizations. And these numbers is still growing day by day. So every day we see new sites, uh, we see new organization, and we see also uh, new users on Restore. And uh, we are also providing the platform in seven languages. So you can see the platform, you can access the platform in English, Portuguese, Spanish, German, French, Dutch, and Indonesian. So now, as I mentioned before, we will watch a video from Brian uh, of Terraformation about how they are using Restore. So Terraformation is an amazing organization working on carbon sequestration through restoration. They make sure that their project accounts the biodiversity and improve the livelihood of the local communities to increase the community resilience towards climate change. They have been re using Restore for a while, and we are pleased to have their testimonial. Let me share. Aloha mai Kako. I'm coming to you from Hawaii Island, home to Terraformation's headquarters. My name is Brian Tucker. I'm a GIS specialist at Terraformation, and I'm here to talk to you about our user experience with the Restore platform. Terraformation and Restore share a lot of common goals and interests in our pursuit of a healthier planet. We share a mutual focus for helping early stage forest creators which makes us a natural fit for working together to increase visibility for restoration projects across the globe. 
In particular, we both genuinely want to help all forest creators map and publish their sites to become more visible to funders. So how do we get there? I was tasked with creating our terraformation profile to best utilize this tool. So here's what you find when logging in. There's a lot going on, as you can see. Um, so explore and get familiar with what's going on around the world. Then get in touch with the Restore team. They are so knowledgeable and so passionate. They've been a great pleasure to work with and so helpful as we get set up. And then you'll create an organizational profile. I'm going to switch screens here. Give me a second. There we go. So here's our profile, and I'm just going to briefly highlight a few of our favorite features that we are developing. So as you can see, you have your organizational information, all your contacts, you know, this, this uh, overview screen, you know, lists everything, and you can um go go deeply into each one or you can use the tab and we use the tabs here so sites they are the heart and soul of what we're all doing you know here we can see our internally managed sites uh, and 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 sites of those that we are partnering with others to implement so um you know every site contains quite a bit of information and you know one to one feature I want to highlight here is, in this example is this is a, a site that we're partnering with Humans for Abundance and managing. And so, as you can see, you know, a lot of information. And, and now we can go into our the organizational relationships at the site level. So you can click on the collaboration tab. You can see Humans for Abundance, Terraformation, we're working together. And, and we know that when we work together, you know, we create a stronger project that's more likely to succeed. So that's, that's really cool to be able to show that with sites. And then uh, points of interest are such a great new feature, uh, you know, being able to highlight all of the important factors that facilitate project success, like seed banks and and nurseries you know they're they're crucial and and so by developing this network you know we can see where where these where these points of interest are located and, and how they might help um you know ours your uh projects and then um collections are are really really interesting and they can be used for a number of purposes so i'm using them to organize sites by partnerships um you know you can make like a, a playlist of your of your favorite sites you know across the world uh but you know as you can see here we're we're still in the early stages um you know we have Quite a few more partners than this, but uh, you know there's a, pro a process to to working together to get them onto the Restore platform and and so forth. And you know the Restore team will help you optimize your experience. And so, you know, where do we grow from here? Um, you know, we're going to connect our current partners. Um, by by introducing them to Restore and working with them to to get their their organizational profiles and their sites on board, and then getting us connected together, and then sourcing new partners, um, you know, encouraging our applicants to join, uh, finding new partners as we explore the site. So this really promotes participation. And then, of course, building a shared capacity to encourage this collaboration between organizations and projects. And so, um, you know, this is a very, a very good tool for, for our purposes and probably for yours, too. So thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions about the user experience, feel free to reach out. But also, the Restore team is fantastic. Aloha.
Yes, um, thank you. Uh, so now um, I think uh, Hima can start uh, doing her part to do a platform demo. So Hima will show you how to, on how to get around restore platform. So off to you, Hima. Just to make sure my screen is visible to everyone. Yes, it's visible. Yeah, hello everyone. This is Hema from India and I'm locally for South Asia. I'll help you to explore the different features of Restore platform as well as how you can, you know, use these different features. So yeah, you can just type restore.eco on your internet browser and you will head up to our platform. This is our platform. To explore the whole platform, just click this explore button and you have different options for exploring this restore platform, the host map, collections, organization, and funding opportunities. I'll take you through all of this one by one. Let's first of all, explore this map section. So yeah, these, this is the map section and here you can see different pin drops, different numbers from different parts of the world. So all these numbers which you are seeing here are different restoration and conservation projects that are published by different practitioners from different parts of the world covering different kinds of biomes. Apart from this different projects which are published by the practitioners, we also host certain point of interest that you can see here in the open panel. You can see the tree nurseries, botanical gardens, seed banks, offices, suppliers, and educational centers. You can select your point of interest and get to know about them more here on platform. Yeah, getting onto the platform, we have the options of this global data layers, just click this global data layers and you will get to know more information about the rich, the amphibian richness, as well as the tree cover laws, you know, the wetland coverage and, and all different information. I'll show you one of my favorite one. You will get to know about the land cover, which is given by the distribution of the land cover given by Israel by just typing the show button here. Similarly, you have the option for also navigating the tree cover laws, which has taken place from 2001 to 2021. So yeah, here you can see the different tree cover laws. You can just select in which year you are interested in, and you can you know get to know about that particular the tree cover laws in that particular region. Say for example, I'm interested to see last 10 year tree cover laws. I can get to know about this like here. So the darker sections show us the recent images and you know the lighter section shows us you know the previous. One. Yeah. Now under this platform section, you can see different pin drops. Now, how you can navigate through different pin drops, you just have to select any of your interested area or interested project, and you just have to click that project and you will head up to their uh, site profile. So say for example, if you know anybody's name or any project's name, you can also search that name here by just typing the project name. And you also have the option of navigating through, through the map here. I'll let you navigate through the map. So I'm interested in one of these sites in India. Let me take you through that particular site. So you just have to click that particular site. And yeah, there you can see the, their boundaries and information about that particular site. So this is one site in Telangana. It is called Green Kana Initiative. You can see in how much area it is distributed and what kind of work they are doing. You can also get to know about them that with which organization they are associated with, what kind of work they are doing, in which ecoregion they are distributed, you know, when they started their project and, you know, how, how this, you know, all the land cover has been distributed in that particular region. If you are interested in knowing more about this particular project or any of the project, you just have to click view more details and you will head up to their complete profile section. So here you can see, the name, the organization this project belongs to, 
the people who are responsible for this project that restored platform, as well as more information like their contact details, what kind of support they are looking for, what are their different goals, and what progress they have made through their different photos they have shared with the world. Apart from this, you can also get to know about their different collections, their point of interest here on their profile section. So this all information has been provided by the implementers who publishes their project on platform. Once anybody publishes their project on platform, the restaurant provides the rest of the information about that particular project. So the information like the biological diversity, the carbon amount, the environment, as well as the time series, which we provide through satellite. So there you can see the time-lapse biodiversity section. So just click this time-lapse and you will head up to the different satellite images which Restore holds. So currently we host two different uh, data from ISRI and from Planet. So yeah, if you're interested in seeing any, any one particular you know, time-lapse, you can select that and you can proceed with that. Here you can see we are providing the time lapse from 2010 to 2021, 2022. There you can see how, you know, the things have been progressed in this particular region from the past 10 years. Yeah. So currently we are hosting a, around 30 centimeter resolution of uh, uh, time lapse as well as, you know, 50 meter resolution of planet data. Yeah, apart from this, you have the option for looking into the biodiversity of this particular region, as well as the carbon amount of this region. You can get to know about the woody, upper woody carbon and the below carbon, the soil organic carbon, as well as the net primary productivity and all. Yeah, these are certain other section and certain other information which you can get through the restaurant platform. If you're interested in knowing more, like from where we have taken this particular data and you know uh, the resolution of this particular data, you just have to click this I tab and just click learn more and you will get to know how you can use this particular information, what resolution we are hosting here. And if you are interested in looking into you know, you know the different articles from where this information have been taken, you can also click this citation here. Apart from this, uh, we are also showing the special resolution of this particular information. This will help you to understand how accurate this is for your particular region. So just click this and you can learn more about this particular special resolution of this information. So yeah, this is about the site profile of the people on Restore platform. Let me take you back to the explore button. Now you can explore the collection section. So under this collection section, we are currently providing a space for people to bookmark their favorite site, as well as for people to arrange their different uh, project site based on their intervention in one particular area. So yeah, this is our featured collection. And below that, you can see different collection made by different people from around the world. Let me show you one of the collection. So yeah, just click this and you will get to know what this collection is about, who are the people you know, responsible for this collection, as well as you know what is the speciality of this particular collection. So this is basically the collection of women-led restoration projects. You can see different projects that are led by you know, wonderful women from different parts of the world here. Yeah, so this is about collection. Now let's move to organization section. So this is a place where you will get to know who are the different organizations currently present on Restore and their different projects distributed around the world. So similar, like in the collection section, we have seen the featured one. Here are the featured organization profiles. So yeah, while exploring the organization section, you have the uh, options of exploring the different organization based on their activities based on their country, based on their organization size. Also, you can search about any organization if you remember their name. Just have to type here and you will head up to the organization, the site and the collection which you are looking for. So, yeah, this is the organization profile of Terraformation. There you can see 
their name, their logo, and the information about this particular organization, what kind of work they are doing, their contact details, their social media networks, the people associated with this profile, as well as their affiliated sites. You will also get to know about their point of interest, their collections, and you know everything. So this is particularly a place where you will get to know about a particular organization completely, like from their own information to their sites, to their point of interest, to their members. Yeah, let's get back to the next one. That is the funding opportunities. So this is the place which we have created for people to assess the funding opportunities. So here you can see the featured one and down bottom you can see different opportunities which are open now. Uh, similarly, here also you can use our different filter based on your countries, based on, you know, based on the eligibility criteria and the status. So yeah, this is about the funding opportunities. So yeah, I'll end up here and I'll pass the next session to Ruth. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much, Hema. Yeah. All right. Um, my name is Ruth, and I am the local lead um, based in Kampala, and I am looking after organizations in East Africa. I'm going to share my screen and show you how to join Restore. And in case you have your laptop open, you can please follow along. So um, if you go to restore.eco, this will be your landing page. And um, in the right-hand corner, there is the option to log in. If you're a returning user and you already created your profile, you can um, log in from there, or you can click the, the yellow button to join Restore. You have the option of, um, of, of, of logging in or joining using your Google account or with your email. Uh, when you click your Google account, uh, uh, like other apps, your information will be shared with Restore and you'll be able to log in using your Google profile. If you click continue with email, we will send you an email to your inbox. In case you do not see it in your inbox, please check your spam folder and you'll be able to find it there. And once you click the sign in link that we share with you, um, you'll be able to find to, to log into your account to, to sign up. Uh, please note that when you are signing up for the first time, you are creating your user profile as a person, not as an organization. So when you're creating your user profile, um, it will appear in a different format because they have already created a, um, a user profile. But these are the questions that we will be asking you to fill. I will ask you to fill your name, um, your email, your location, your languages, your job title, your field of expertise. Um, uh, and then you can also continue and also put habitat of expertise and you can save. You can always come back to edit your profile and you can change this information. You can also upload a, a, um, a profile photo and um, as long as it's not larger than 5 MB, you'll be able to be able to appear on your user profile. Now, once you've created your user profile, um, you can always go to my restore, uh, my overview, and under your overview, you'll be able to see the option to edit your profile. And this is where you'll be able to change um, the, the details that you added in your personal profile. Um, maybe before I go further to note, you can always um, explore restore in different languages. And you can do that by coming to the menu tab right here. And um, you can change languages uh, from right here. In case uh, English is not your preferred language, you can navigate the platform in any of these seven languages. Um, so in the right-hand corner, there will be a yellow button, create, and you can always return to this to create um, your organization profile. In case we have more than um, uh, one user uh, from the same organization, please note that only one of you should create the organization profile. And then you can later add your colleague as a member or an admin. So to create an organization profile, you come to the create button and right here, there will be the option to create a new organization. Um, here, you'll be able to put the organization name. Um, I'll put it as test one and you can add the organization website. In some cases, 
for some projects that do not have websites. Uh, putting a URL in this field is mandatory, so you can add a URL to your social media profile in case you do not have a website. Um, then you can add a country. I will pick, um, I'll pick India, and then you can continue. Um, sorry. Then we will ask you to, to mention what best describes your organization, and you can pick from any of these, and um, you can, for some of the options, you have a drop down and you can uh, click continue. Sorry. Sorry. Um, just a second. I will log out and log in again. Just give me a second. Um, Are you still seeing my screen? Uh, no, I think you need to reshare. Yeah, yeah right. now we can see your All right, so... Um... Sorry, Anissa, are you able to share? I think I'm getting an error on my site. Okay, let me share my screen. Yes. Can you see my screen now? Yeah. Okay. So um, just to continue. Um, so this is basically how uh, it looks like after uh, you uh, join Restore. So you will be basically have like your overview uh, here on my Restore. You will have your sites if you already have uploaded your sites, uh, your collections point of interest and also organization you are that you are a part uh, of. So um, here on this uh, page, actually I have uh, my organizational profile already, but uh, if you haven't got any organizational profile, if you haven't been a, an admin of any organization, uh, so here on the create uh, button here, uh, below here, there should be an option to add your organization. So um, probably let me change my account uh, to another account that has an organizational profile. Wait a So yeah, so this is uh, how it looks like uh, if your profile is brand new. Um, and here there will be a button to create a collection and also add or your organization. So basically, if you want to have uh, your organization present on Restore, you can click this one, add your organization, and then you can put your organization name, um, website, uh, country, um, and finish uh, the process until your organization is uploaded. Yes, and after that, you can check um, also other organizations. Like if you explore your organization, you can also uh, search through, uh, through the search bar uh, to see uh, whether your organization is already listed here or not. For example, just like before, what Ima does is we can uh, type, for example, general formation. Uh, for organize and click this part of organization and then go to um, their organization profile. 
And then once you have the organization, organizational profile, you can start adding your sites. Um, you can go by create a uh, new site. So right now, uh, this process is possible when you are adding sites one by one. Um, you can either uh, draw it directly on the platform or you can upload uh, the area file if you have it already in shapefile or in other file like game that KML or uh, GeoJSON. Um, just basically selecting the files from your laptop. Yes, uh, if you want to try this out and you want to try on how to draw uh, your site boundaries um, directly on the platform, you can go to your area. For example, um, if like, uh, for example, if I am doing like trying to do or I'm doing a restoration uh, for mangrove ecosystem in this area, I can just uh, make the boundaries by clicking uh, this one. This is just an example. Uh, so it is advised like if your area is large, then you should have like more than 10 points because there is uh, the limitation to make sure that every project on restore is based on, it's really a project in the field. So this is uh, what we have applied on the platform. So for example, here, uh, if this is the uh, area that I'm restoring, um, I can start analyzing the area. And then um, here, all uh, almost all uh, the data layers will be calculated directly based on the boundaries that you have drawn. And here we have biodiversity, uh, carbon, uh, water, environment, uh, envir uh, and also land cover. So you will be able to see this directly. And if you have, uh, if you want to save your site, you can save uh, as a site here, or if you want to redraw the area, fix uh, the polygon, uh, you can redraw the area. Uh, but please uh, be reminded, once you click this save a site, you cannot go back to the redraw area. So um, you will have to start all over again. So here, save a site, and then you can put the site name. For example, I can put task one. Um, you can put the description and whether you have working this area in this area or not. So if it's still planning, you can say no. If it's um, it's already ongoing, uh, you can say yes. Uh, when it is started, for example, uh, what type uh, of projects you are, like the main uh, things that you are uh, doing on this side, whether it's restoration, like planting trees and so on, or conservation, like conserva conservating um, certain wildlife or certain uh, flora, for example. So for example, uh, restoration and then continue. Yes. And uh, you have to indicate the main type of intervention. So if it's planting, it's most probably active restoration and uh, also probably assisted natural regeneration and others. And here we also include sustainable agriculture. For example, if you are doing permaculture, if you're trying to restore, um, you know, like uh, your soil, for example, if your soil is highly polluted or highly degraded and you want to restore uh, the soil to original uh, state by you know planting the right crops or doing organic uh, farming then you can choose this one and agroforestry as well and here you can choose uh, more than one um, goals that you are trying to achieve uh, whether it be conserving biodiversity uh, provide employment and so on and the supports that you are looking for whether you're looking for coordination with other projects uh, you are looking for funding um yeah so you can continue on this and here you can upload uh the photos of your sites like you can upload the photos like how the landscape look like or uh, for example if people are planting on the fields you can uh, upload their activities uh, the, the photos of their activities and so on so for now we'll just keep this step and here uh, there are some more information that you need to provide so what kind of land use um, before you are start, you start uh, the intervention, uh, whether it's grazing land or deforested land or others, um, and then also for post intervention land cover. So basically, what you are trying to achieve uh, by doing the intervention. So the site management, um, whether it's community, corporate, NGO, or jointly managed, 
and ownership of uh, status. Like if you don't know about the ownership, you can just other or even unknown. Um, you can also put the website, your website, if you have one or your social media link, if you don't have any website and also your email so that if people are interested in your projects, want to volunteer, want to fund your projects, they know uh, where to contact. Yes. And here there's an option to publish um, the sites. Uh, by publishing the sites, basically everyone, um, yeah, basically uh, everyone on Restore who are uh, accessing Restore can access your sites. They can see your sites on the map. They can see also um, the data that is provided by Restore. But if you save it as a private site, you will not, uh, people other than your account or other account that you purposely uh, shared, uh, you know, the admin rights with or the member rights with, they cannot see their, uh, your site. Yes. So here, for example, I will just save this as a private site because this is just an example. Yes, and here you can add other members. Um, this is a since this is a private site. If you want to see other people, then others will have to uh, make a restore, and then uh, you will you need to add them as a member. Yeah. So this is uh, how the site will look like, and uh, you get the overview, and you can here also state about the collaboration, and also link your organization. Um, if you already have your organizational profile, you can link your organization on this page, and yeah, you will be able to see the time lapse, biodiversity, carbon, and so on. Yes. And other um, features that we have is uh, POI, points of interest, is basically the point version of um, this kind of uh, sites, but it's not for exactly restoration sites, but it's more for tree nurseries, botanical gardens, seed banks, um, offices, suppliers, uh, educational centers, uh, or well or pumps. Because the reason is because, well, for restoration, we want to know the area, and this uh, POI will help. Will basically help you uh, kind of like know like uh, if I want to do restoration, uh, if I I have three nurseries, where my three nurseries are, or if I want to find other three nurseries, where there are, um, whether it's offices or suppliers. And we hope that uh, by doing this, Restore can be a global hub. And for this POI. Um, you need to have an organizational, organizational profile to be able to uh, upload this POI. And basically, just uh, it will be available under this create one if you have organizational profile already. So it, it is to make sure that each uh, POI is real, that it is uh, affiliated with any organization. So yeah, I think uh, that's all. And yeah, thank you, uh, Hima. And also, um, thank you, uh, Ruth, for the presentation. And let me share my original screen again. Yes. So, yeah. OK. So yeah, if you need any help, uh, you can always contact us. Uh, we have 11 team members all over the globe. You can contact in different languages and you can send us emails or we can even schedule a call if you need help or support. And I think uh, now we can start our Q&A session. So we already have uh, some uh, questions uh, from the Q&A box. Um, I will read some of them. So, but if you have uh, any question that you want to uh, say out loud uh, using uh, your mic, so please uh, raise your hand and Jason will allow you to unmute your mic. Um, so probably first I We'll answer what there's one question in the QA box from Florina. Um, hi, is Restore platform addressed to visi uh, visibility 
uh, maritime or coastal ecosystem restoration project. Yes, uh, we welcome all, all type of uh, restoration or conservation projects in uh, all ecosystem because basically like we want, uh, it's not only the terrestrial ecosystem one that matters, but also the, mar uh, the marine and also coastal um, ecosystem also matters because, well, all ecosystem is interconnected in the landscape anyway, so it will be good if people can actually start collaborating to um, restore their landscape from the terrestrial one down to the uh, marine ecosystem. And yes, and um, there is another question. Can improve natural ecosystem management such as forest be monitored by Restore True? Yes, uh, it is uh, possible to do that uh, using Restore. And uh, is Restore Map linked to Google Map? Uh, how to transfer location on Google Map to Restore Map? So actually, like uh, this is not on Restore is uh, have an API through Google Map, but right now it only works as a one way thing. So from Restore to Google Map, but not the other way around. So if you want to upload your sites uh, based on the location that you have on Google Map, you can contact us and we can figure, it, uh, figure out how to do it. So basically, uh, you will need the boundaries of your site uh, and the coordinate for each of the vertices, and it will help us to basically uh, delineate your boundary of site. And yeah, um, how do you calculate the carbon sequestration? Um, is it the organization is the one who provide the data? So right now the data from Restore is basically um, the one that is automatically generated based on this latest uh, global database. Uh, and gl this global database is also based on the latest scientific um, publication. And you can access uh, each of the publication for each of the data layers by clicking the I button. Uh, next to the data layers, you will see like um, the explanation of the data layers, including the link to the publication. Yes. And I think we have. Oh, yeah. So uh, that also answers uh, theory questions. Um, because he would like to know how to calc uh, to calculate all the parameters. So yeah, all of the all of the information is available on Restore website. So probably I can uh, stop sharing and share my uh, share the Restore platform again. So here, uh, basically, if you go uh, to the data layers. Um, there should there should be the source. So for example, this one, uh, Jenkins et al. Uh, and you will be directed to the website. Of the publication. So is there any more questions? So yeah, if you want to talk, uh, freely raise your hand and we will unmute you so that you can ask the question. Ah, uh, Mireya uh, say uh, you may, you may um, miss the beginning. Um, it is totally okay. So we, we recorded this uh, webinar and later on we will send you the recording. Ah, uh, Mireya also asked, uh, what is the business model of Restore? Uh, are, are we nonprofit? Yes, we are a nonprofit organization. Um, we are based in Switzerland and we uh, are getting philanthropic fundings for our operation. Any more question? Or ah, by the way, uh, there's also one question for terraformation, but 
probably Jason can answer, is Terraformation also operates in Southeast Asia? Um, yeah, so I think they were asking about South Asia in the question, but so we have our only partner on the ground right now in Asia is in India. Uh, Worldview Impact is their name. I think I shared the link in the answer. Um, we are looking for new partners. Our first, so our Seed to Carbon Forest Accelerator program just launched in February. So the first, our first four participants, two are in Colombia, uh, one in Kenya and one in Ghana. So we're look, we haven't started in the Asia Pacific region yet, but we're looking to do so within this year. So I'm excited for that. And if you're interested, uh, just reach out through email or through our website. Uh, Jason, uh, Mireya also asked, like, um, who is the partner in Kenya, <laughs> if it's possible to disclose them? Yeah, so I'm not sure I'm, I'm supposed to say that yet, but uh, if you're curious, email me and I'll check, I'll check with uh, our team who does the works with the group to make sure that we have their that group's permission. We want to be, uh, uh, we haven't publicly announced it yet, so we want to be careful with their privacy to make sure that they allow us to tell, tell people who, who they are. Yes, thank you. Any more questions? So if uh, there is no more questions, so I would like to uh, thank you everyone for the question, uh, feedback and suggestion. And uh, you can always contact us if you have more questions or suggestions or feedback. We are happy to help in case you need support. Uh, so if you haven't already, uh, we are inviting you to create your account and organizational profile and also to use restore to your advantage and spread the words uh, around your network and we think anyone could benefit from free open platform like restore and yeah uh, lastly i just want to relay one more information so restore uh, will have another webinar on thursday 27 april 2023 so in three days I think um, we will talk deeper about Restore features, including the upcoming ones during this upcoming webinar. So in case you want to know more about Restore uh, or you have colleagues who are interested but couldn't attend today, or you think someone or some people could be benefit from Restore platform, you can share about this upcoming webinar. Um, here is the QR code and I will also share the QR code and link um, through the chat box. And uh, since we will share about our upcoming updates on this webinar, uh, it will be a great chance uh, to share your feedbacks and suggestion after you, after you try the platform today. So yeah, it is very pleasant experience to have this webinar series. So we, we've been having this webinar series uh, since last month with ISDS and also Terraformation. So thank you everyone for your attention, question, feedback, and suggestion. I would also like to thank you again uh, for ISTF and Terraformation for collaborating with us to make this happen. Thank you all. And now I want to invite Rowena from ISTF again uh, to give your closing remarks. Off to you, Rowena. Thank you, Anissa. I just want to say, say thank you so much for people who join, not just from Asia Pacific, but from around the world. We hope to see your sites and your accounts in the Restore platform. Thank you so much. And yeah, uh, Jason. I just wanted to reiterate the thank yous that have been said. Thank you to everyone help, who helped set up this webinar. And thank you to all of you who have joined from around the world. It's really cool to see so many people interested. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out.
Okay, thank you everyone for joining and have a great rest of the day. Bye.